Well, it's a mystery as old as the universe and one of the great puzzles of particle physics, and it involves space, the final frontier. This week, scientists managed to trap antimatter particles, if only for a few seconds. Fans of the uh, sci-fi series Star Trek may remember antimatter helped fuel the Starship Enterprise's warp drive. It is a breakthrough that also echoes the hit Hollywood movie Angels and Demons, but this is real life. The discovery took place at the European Nuclear Research Center, better known as CERN in Switzerland. And although it can't drive a starship or pose a threat to the Vatican, it could help answer questions about the origins of the universe. It's been hailed as an important breakthrough in the world of physics. Well, joining us now with more is Professor Mike Charlton, who's at the head of physics at Swansea University in Wales and also part of the team at CERN. Professor, welcome. Thank you very much for being with us. First of all, explain to us, what is antimatter? Well, in some sense, antimatter is just like matter, except that some of the important properties, the simple one, the electrical charge, is flipped in, in matter when you go from matter to antimatter. And this makes a very important difference because when the pair meet, uh, they can annihilate and disappear into other forms of energy and matter. So, what will you use? What could this be used for? Well, anti-hydrogen itself can only be used for physics experiments for the foreseeable future. And we want to try and interact with the anti-hydrogen atoms inside the trap we've made and try and find out if their properties are the same as those as hydrogen. But antiparticles like positrons have real-life applications in medicine, so who knows down the line. So the things that we've seen on television and movies, that is just light years away. Oh yes, very much so. It's science fiction and it's great fun, but bear in mind we have to make these anti-atoms because the particles themselves are so rare, we have to make them one at a time. How much of a breakthrough is this? How big of a deal is this? Well, we've been working towards this for five years directly and some of us for much more than that indirectly. And what it, now we're now confident that we'll be able to go on and actually study the properties of this anti-hydrogen. Anti Before we made this uh, a breakthrough, we weren't at all sure that there's going to be a showstopper, but we now we know there isn't. In the sense of, for those who don't really understand the physics and the science of it all, why should people be interested? Why should they care? It is the number one topic on CNN.com right now, as we should say. So obviously people are very much interested in it, but what is the big deal of all of this? Well, I, I think I think people can get inspired by uh, 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 scientists, physicists who are trying to answer these fundamental questions, and we're delighted that people are taking so much interest in it. There aren't going to be any antimatter products out there for a while, but nevertheless, you know, this inspires people to go on and take further interest in science. And in that sense, it's really great. You talked about how this could one day perhaps become beneficial to uh, research when it comes to medicines. Tell me a little bit more about that. Well, the the, uh, the antiparticle, which is called the positron, which is the antiparticle of the electron, that is relatively easy to produce. And that is used in medicine already in a technique called positron emission tomography. And that's a very important technique looking at brain function in real time. So applications of antiparticles are already well known and they're out there in medicine and engineering. So it may be that others will be discovered in the future. All right, Professor Mike Charlton, uh, thank you very much and congratulations to you and your team. Thanks very much indeed.